Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supergirl, as well as the latest episode of The Walking Dead. Like always, if I'm talking about something that you want to listen to, you can always look in the description down below. I clue at a time and I start talking about each of the respective shows. So, for example, if you want to hear what I say about this week's episode of Supergirl, you can skip to what I had to say about this week's episode of The Walking Dead. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is this week's episode of Supergirl. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode episode. I do love that one by one the team ended up getting taken down first, Menagerie and then the Morai. Uh, what was really interesting is that they ended up breaking into the uh, Fortress of Solitude. It was like, how the hell do you know about that? I guess, I don't know, I guess it's something on Hat's department or maybe it's Manchester, maybe he's just well versed. It's like, because it never came up about how you knew about that, uh, even breaking in like that. You would think there would be some security measures, but I guess it's like no one really comes there like that, so... Well, that was the Fortress of Solitude, right? I mean, not unless that's not the Fortress of Solitude, not unless that's like another, like, essentially bunker that Clark has around Earth or something like that. I would assume I would assume that was the Fortress of Solitude, but maybe I'm 100% wrong on that. Either way, it was just kind of interesting that it broke in there. What I thought was also interesting, though, is kind of like how the team kind of fell apart to a certain extent because Manchester is so consumed with his revenge, which had to like, yeah, I get that. But the fact of the matter is we're meant to change the world and not just be so caught up in petty revenge. It's also interesting, too, because it turns out he knows Fiona. I guess that's actually how Manchester met Hat was through Fiona. Um... I guess it never clicked in my head to think of him, like I said, because he has that fifth dimensional energy thing, so I was like, I would, I'd assume that he was, you know, a fifth dimensional, I didn't think of him as an alien, but not unless he's just an alien that happened to get access to fifth dimensional energy, like I said, uh, but anyway... It seemed like they went their separate ways, but then, like, Manchester ends up getting, potential, quote-unquote, eaten by a uh, Sun Eater, which, it's interesting to know that that's literally a thing. I wonder would that ever be anything big, you know, or is that just going to be something that gets stuck? The fact is, they went out of their way to call it a Sun Eater and all that makes me think, like, it's probably not going to come up as a main plot thing in the show, but it might be something, like, from the comic books or something, because it's just so interesting, because it's like, it's such a, I don't know, it's just a, a specific thing. Thing. Maybe that's like a reference to something, kind of like a wink and a nod to something, like I said, from the comic books or something. I have no idea, but it just it just seems so interesting. Like, th something that literally eats the sun, but, well, eats like sun energy or whatever, and it's literally kind of like a bomb. Makes me think, like, there might be something more with that, but maybe not. Who knows? I also love that the entire episode, Nia, you know, as Dreamer, uh, has her outfit on the entire time. And it's like, even John's like, doesn't she know she kind of doesn't have to wear that on the inside? But then, you know, Kara's like, yeah, you know, she, it's, you know, it's, you know, first time superhero thing. Because she's like, the first time I got my out, you know, my suit as Supergirl, I, I loved it. I never took it off. I even slept in it. And it's just like, it's such a funny thing to think about. Uh, it's just funny getting that insight to superheroes. Because, you know, Nia is like, yeah, I'm a superhero and everything. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's learning stuff. And he's like, uh, I love that thing later on when she's telling the Morai, uh, freeze or die or something like that. And then Sukkar's like, you need to like take that down to a seven. She's like, freeze or else. And it's just it's just so interesting her doing that because like Car, uh, you know, uh, she gets all up in um, Menagerie's face and like, tell us what you know. You're going to eat this energy she's building up in her head. And Car Supergirl's like, yo, you need to calm it down. She's like, I thought you said we need to show strength. I meant like put your hands on your hips or something, not just be screaming to people. But she's like. Right, got it. I just, I just thought that was so neat, just seeing early day superhero and seeing so. It's always neat when you get to see people kind of embrace their superhero ness and stuff like that. So, um, a lot of interesting things went down. You have Alex having to protect Ben Lockwood, so that's a real sucky thing. You even had Kara kind of being a little pissed that she had to protect him too, because it's like no matter what the circumstances is, she definitely do does not believe or side with him, but she has no choice because. A, like, no one, whether you believe, with them, believe in them or not, you know, whether you agree with their motives or not, you still have to protect them, because that's what she does as a hero, you know? And that was something she ended up telling Alex, because Alex felt the same way, but Kara's like, the fact of the matter is you protect people, that's your job, and whether you agree with Lockwood or not, he's people that you have to protect. You know, that's what a hero does. They make the tough choices, even having to protect someone you don't like or agree with, you know? It's kind of interesting, because, like, Alex kind of has to be forced to do that. Um, 
All the while, you know, Brainy's doing his situation of... I had a feeling he was American alien. Just the, fa the fact is that he was like, oh, yeah, I can't... It's like, you're such a smart person. Because you can tell he was almost like, oh, man, this person I'm going up against is super smart. He would have been like, I, I can crack this. I'll get to it. Like, he would have been very competitive about it if it was someone else. You, you could just tell that it was kind of him. Especially because he was kind of making excuses. Like, oh, no, I, I, you know, want me to lead the team. But it's like, I was thinking because he wanted to be there for the march. He goes to John, Carl. And Nia, but Kara, you know, it's like, no, I want to, you know, I need a surveillance to place, you know, as a hero to kind of look out for trouble and stuff like that. Because it's interesting because Brainy said an interesting thing where it's like, without his Legion ring, he kind of felt less of a hero because I think being a part of the Legion, the Legion ring kind of reminded him, it's like, hey, I'm part of the Legion, and the fact that it matter is I'm a superhero, it kind of represented his identity, but he realized, like, even without it, I can make a difference. You know, the fact is fighting alongside my friends like you, John, and Nia, like I'm able, you know, fight for what's right and do help other people. That's what gives me strength. And he said something to Kara because Kara, he was like, the fact of the matter is before being a superhero, you are a citizen of this earth. And it took Kara seeing this dude telling these, he's like, oh, go back to your plans. It's like, hey, and he's like, oh, hey, Supergirl. And, he, and she's like, why are you treating them any different? Because, like, Ben's making it seem like, oh, we'll push and send all these people back to their planet. Well, some of these people don't have a planet to go back to. If you take someone like Kara, for example, where's she, where she supposed to go? Where's Supergirl going to go? And is everyone going to be okay with that? It's like, oh, you want to shoo away other aliens, but what about Supergirl? She's an alien. You want to you want to repeal her time on this planet stuff, especially considering the fact that a lot of these people have been here for who knows how long. They might not, besides not having a world to go back to, that's not their culture. That's not their world. Like I said, this is their world because maybe they've grown up on Earth. Or, you know, like Kara was explaining, like some of them might be escaping wars and stuff like that. I mean, even take John. John, like the Mars is slowly rebuilding itself, but like his family is gone. Like there's not much on Mars necessarily for him, even though, even though things are kind of slowly being like rebuilt and everything. But Earth's kind of the only home he has left now, you know, so... What I thought was kind of interesting was kind of the dude being like, no, you're different from them. You're a superhero. And that came up earlier in the season, but it took him seeing that to really push it in my head. I was like, right. Because a lot of people don't look at Supergirl as an alien. They, because for one, she looks like any normal human being. She just has superpowers. But it's like, because everyone see her as a superhero first before they see her as an alien. If they even see her as an alien at all. And I thought that was such an interesting thing. And that's what inspired Car to be like, no, I have to stand here and show my support. Because I'm not here as Supergirl. That's why she even covered up the symbol and everything. Because it's like before even you know being a symbol you know you are a person you are a citizen of this planet you are an alien on this planet and so that's why she covered herself up because she doesn't want to be there as supergirl she wants to be there as cars or the alien you know and the kryptonian i thought that was such an interesting um aspect to it and you had that line from jimmy i thought was kind of pretty neat like the fact is you can use your fists and you can you know probably reach a few people and stuff like that but as a journalist you can reach millions that basically saying that your words can telling uh the reporter francis that like yeah your words they can they mean something you know so don't kind of feel like they don't it's like yeah because you could be part of you know the conversation and the, the decisions of changing people's heart which i thought was kind of a neat thing about this episode was we did see a lot of people's hearts change like obviously ben's playing into the hatred and fear that most people have but seeing things kind of break down like that we saw humans helping aliens aliens helping humans yeah there were people amongst the crowds kind of causing troubles like the children of liberty and whatnot and just people who are riled up but the fact of the matter is it was kind of a very united front in a sense and i thought that was kind of pretty neat you know but the sad thing is it's the whole like manchester situation of him playing with john because i think for him he's trying to like just just like he's consumed by hatred i think that's what he's trying to do push john until john becomes consumed by hatred maybe it's at that point he'll for, i don't know take control of john or something i don't know what it is but He's tugging at, like, I guess he wants John to feel exactly the way he does. It's like, because it's like, oh, you're burying your feelings and stuff like that. Because it, it was an interesting thing because the moment Manchester was gone, John actually kind of felt bad because he was like, I actually feel a little relief. But Nia kind of pointed something out. She was like, you don't really know what kind of impact people have on you until they're gone, whether it be good or bad. Because for, you know, John... Manchester is a reminder of like, I couldn't reach him. The fact is he betrayed and manipulated me. I thought, you know, he was an ally and a friend, but in actuality he wasn't. I thought I could reach him. And now if anything happens, it's kind of on John and that hatred's consuming him. I guess because for him, it's like, 
I guess in a way he almost looked at Manchester as, you know, someone... I guess because of his radical nature, it's like, your actions make you no different than white Martians that wiped out my people, like, you know, green Martians. And I think that might be what's driving John, you know, that built up hatred and trust. Because I think for him, he's not dealing with it like he should. I feel like he's burying it. And, you know, you don't do well burying your emotions. They find some way to come out until you finally break, you know, and do something terrible. I mean, he almost did this episode. He was beating the crap out of Manchester. Until it, he realized, like, oh, it was like a, a hologram projection. It was a child of liberty that he could have easily have killed because he was getting into it. I was thinking that was such an interesting little detail because I kept wondering, like, every time we see John, he's always in his human form. Part of me is like, you know, you want to break the illusion of TV and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, it's probably expensive, like, you know, having to get the special effects of getting him look like a Martian all the time. But it looks like there's a justification for it, too. It's because him not being in his Martian form is him kind of, like, not turning into the Manhunter. But obviously we see that at the end of the episode. It's like, fine, I'm a find you uh manchester as a manhunter and it seems like he takes on his martian form and i think that's what that's supposed to represent because him kind of being in his martian form is him unsheathing his sword of like using not holding himself back using his full strength to hunt down manchester and like i said he's just getting more and more consumed by rage it's also interesting, too, because this episode had an interesting effect on Haley as well, because, you know, she, you know, appreciates Alex doing what she did. Alex is, you know, protecting Ben, even though she didn't agree, kind of putting your politics aside to do your job and protect someone, you know, no matter who it is. And then also saying, like, American Alien was the good guy in this situation after all walks away. And both of them are looking like she's so perplexing because it's like. You know, because Haley has on occasion seemed like she might be anti-alien, but at other times it's like, no, she seems pro-alien. I think for her it's just she wants to protect everyone on this planet. She just wants to keep the peace, stop everything from erupting into a potential civil war, you know? I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, it even plays into, like, her conversation with Lena early in the episode because she's telling Lena to hurry up, but Lena doesn't want to hurry up because it's like the chances of this working is only 90%. She wants to make it 100% because... When she tried this before, I mean, we know at least one case where she's tried it within the confines of the show. Like, there might have been others, but she tried it once on, on that dude, and he ended up dying from it sometime later. So, she doesn't, she's not going to have another. It's not just about, like, oh, these humans, you know, these are people who signed up that, you know, are willing to sacrifice their lives, their soldiers, and stuff like that. It's like, no, it's also where her own conscience. She can't, without all good conscience, like, let people get killed because of her she you know that's a lot to ask a person to live with too if something goes wrong but Haley kind of goes you know what but today made her realize like hey the fact that matters you have more time because you know things didn't erupt like things are a storm is coming with this whole thing it's only a matter of time before everything implodes but today you know thanks to you know Jimmy's reporting and Francis you know the pictures you know uh, Jimmy took and the um, the reporting that Francis did uh, it kind of show that there is more to the situation, that there is unity amongst this division, you know, so I thought that was kind of an interesting thing, but it hasn't changed Lena's mind, because Lena, it just feels like, no, we still got to be prepared, and it's so interesting, because Jimmy brought even earlier in the episode, being like, oh, we need to, you know, talk about this black budget, but Eva's like, no, 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 we're the good guys in this, you, you know, so the fact is they said that, Makes me think, like, okay, Eve's going to have a rude awakening at some point when the time comes. Because Lena doesn't want the powers to get in the wrong hands and stuff like that. That's why she's doing things her way. But the fact of the matter is, might not have a choice. And it's like, even doing what you're doing now, even if you're like, oh, you know, uh, I'm doing this, giving the powers to the right people. But the fact of the matter is, as we saw, President can be a little, wait, what? With the way he handles a lot of stuff. So for him, you know, it might be a situation where whether you want it to or not, it might fall into the wrong hands. Like, once again, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So who's to say, like, the moment you get those powers? You always talked about, like, oh, making sure you give it to the right person. But, I mean, who are you to really deem who is worthy and who isn't worthy of getting the powers and stuff like that? You know, just because someone puts up this facade of, like, oh, this is who I am, doesn't mean that's going to be the case. I wonder, will it, because I, I thought that crossed my mind was, when it's all said and done, I'm curious, will Jimmy be one of the people that gets powers? Would he be one of the first people, you know, Lena would want to give powers to just because she knows who he is? Or maybe even Alex. I kind of lean more towards even thinking Alex might be someone that gets powers too, just because she's a friend of Lena's and Lena knows what kind of person she is and her character. So, and I don't know. It's just definitely going to be an interesting thing to see how that ends up playing out. Uh, sadly, at the end, we. Oh, 
well, before we get to like the sad part, uh, the fact is, I love that it's like, you know, Jimmy being like, oh yeah, we can talk to Supergirl and her sidekick, and Nia's like, sidekick, and you know, you have Carr nudging her, she's Oh, yeah, and it's just like, I like that, because no, 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 I'm a hero, and like, why, why am I, you know, uh, reduced to sidekick? I just thought that was kind of funny, because first, it's like, yeah, here I am, I, I, I stepped into my superhero, you know, I spread my superhero wings, and here I am, and I'm reduced to a sidekick? Well, I just, I just thought that was kind of pretty neat, uh, but nevertheless, obviously talking about, like I said, the sad thing we see at the end is that Jimmy gets shot. Honestly, it's hard to say who, ha who was behind that. I don't think it was Ben... Like, I think, yeah, I'm sure, because no matter how much he disagrees with Jimmy, even if Jimmy kind of put a positive spin to everything, it's like, no, like, Ben wouldn't do that to another human. Like, I mean, obviously, well, to be fair, he's killed people, sure, but that's more of a power and position thing. Jimmy's not necessarily threatening his position, not in that regard, like that dude from last episode was, but uh, I, it's hard to say who it is. It could be. Part of my brain wants to think, like, it'd be kind of twisted if it ended up being Eve, but I doubt it is. Not unless it turns out to be, like, Ben Lockwood's son, George. I, that's always a possibility. I don't think so, but, you know, can't put it past it, so. Could it have been someone from Catco who didn't agree with his stance on things and stuff like that? I'm very curious to see what that ends up being, because who it ends up being revealed to be the one behind the trigger says a lot about going forward. I think it's going to... Impact a lot of stuff. I think it's going to be very revealing, re very revealing, revealing when we find out. Also, I forgot to note the fact is that Hat got taken down too. I like that. It's so cool when you get to see um, Hat versus, jeez, uh, uh, Brainy. You know, just the like the, the cool movements and stuff like that. You know, um, sadly, uh, Brainy still hasn't gotten his Legion ring back because. Uh, Manchester still has it, but the elite has been taken down to at least one person now, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what Manchester does. I feel like when he, now that he's alone, probably going to see an even deadlier side of him, but we'll ultimately have to wait and see what ends up happening. Like I said, I'm very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us. And now moving on to this week's episode of The Walking Dead. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. It turns out that symbol, which I was wondering if it was, you know, the, uh, whisperers but in the grand scheme of things it's like well we kind of already got you well that was before we saw their community but it seems like that's their only one place they don't seem like they mark territories necessarily they are nomads kind of in a certain, certain regard so it's like okay turns out that symbol belongs to another group known as a highwayman and i love the whole thing of like well we heard rumors about some of the ex-saviors kind of taking up spot around here, and Carol's like, nah, it's not them. It's like, no, she's, she knows for sure because she already killed all of them uh, earlier uh, this season. I was like, yeah, you would know about it. And I'm assuming the fact that she said, didn't say anything means she didn't tell the others that she did that. I guess because it's also because like the kingdom's trying to go about things differently because they don't want to just kind of get sucked up into violence and all that stuff. Which is interesting on many different levels, because when it came to dealing with the highwaymen, they were like, I guess we're just going to have to kill him. Carol's the one that suggested, now let's talk to him. I guess it's because she tried to find another way around with the saviors, and it's like, oh, they didn't want to listen, so it's like, yeah, let's kill him. They uh, took something from her, and they were just completely other assholes. They weren't really in the mood to listen, listen so they got taken care of. But I think it's also interesting, because let's not forget, there was that point, you know, a couple seasons back when Carol wasn't all about killing anyway. You know, she just she just couldn't do it anymore. So it's interesting to see, like, her, you know, her character be what it is. Because it's so interesting, because, like, you know, that point when she was kind of by herself, she was kind of all, you know, and when they first came to Alexandria, like, it's so crazy when you look at the progression Carol, Carol's character has had over the course of the entire series. It just, it's mind-boggling to realize how she got to where she is right now and just constantly how she's evolved as a person. So it's interesting. I do love that they do talk to the highway men, and I love that. Uh, it's like, hey, we're trying to talk, okay. You know, it's like, hey, we don't have the supplies, but the highway men are like, yeah, we need them too. And I love that Jerry was whispering to the uh, Ezekiel, and it's like, oh, yes, and Jerry wants his sword back. I love that Jerry was like, yeah, we got to make sure this is at the top of negotiation. I need my damn sword back. Uh, but it's like the highwayman didn't, highway didn't want to listen. It's like, oh, you're fair and everything is fine on all that. Because it's like, hey, you patrol the roads, making sure the fair happens. We'll share, you know, some of the profits and, you know, all the trade that goes on. You'll benefit from it as well. You'll have to do better. And I love Kara goes, When's the last time you guys seen a movie and the guy who's the leader of Highway Men is like, you, 
you, you serious? And she's smiling, cut. And she's just like, dude, it all, it's serendipitous. Who knew? Because you thought you could just kind of like, I mean, because, I mean, that was kind of the whole point. And it's kind of like Ezekiel was like, yeah, it seems like it's such a silly thing, but it matters. The little things like that matter because it keeps people's hopes up, gives them something other than just kind of some semblance of the real world. And it's like, it's been a very long time since any of them saw a movie. So, it's just kind of interesting how that one thing kind of led to this, you know, so it kind of worked out in the end. Because the Highwaymen weren't definitely all that bad be because even Carol was kind of pointing out the fact is they didn't kill Jerry and the others. It's like also on top of not killing them, they also sent a note. Who would have actually done that? Did the Saviors do that? No, what the Saviors did is lined everybody up so that Negan can bash two people's heads in. You know, so it's like, that's how they responded. So it just it shows you the difference there. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And luckily, it, they because of this partnership with the Highwaymen, they showed up when Tara and the others were on their way to the uh, fair and everything. Like, who are you? We're the Highwaymen. We're here to escort you. It's like, yo, you came just in time, dude. I thought that was pretty dope. I also thought it was kind of nice how Earl and his wife, obviously, it's like, oh, we're you're almost kind of been like, oh, we're two old people who are we to be taking after care of a baby. But for them, it seems like it works out in the end because, you know, they're like, oh, we need to find a good home for the baby. But they both care for the baby. So it's like, yeah, we'll look after. We'll, you know, it's like the baby already kind of found a family. So I thought that was kind of a nice little twist to that. Uh, not twist, but just a happy ending in that regard. I mean, they lost their son. Um... And so for them, it's like, I'm sure they weren't willing to kind of go through that. You know, it's like, it's nice to have some, you know, it's almost like they got a second chance, you know. Uh, their son might be gone, but maybe they think maybe their son can live on through this baby. I don't know. I mean, it just at the very least, raising and take care of another life, it, you know, gives them purpose and stuff like that. It gives them an opportunity to raise another young person to, you know, help change this world, essentially. So I thought that was kind of pretty neat. Other side of things is kind of like, yo, you had um, Daryl being like, yo, we need to go, you know, it's like we can't go back to Hilltop. Because we go back to Hilltop, they'll know that Hilltop was a part of it and broke the agreement, so that turned into a whole fiasco in itself. Uh, suggesting kind of like leaving Lydia to her own devices because she didn't tell them everything, plus all of this is because of her and everything. And I love that Daryl's like, no, it's this way. Connie's like, no, it's this way. Everyone, including the dog, follows her. And you almost have Daryl being like, what the hell? Uh, but it's interesting because even um, you had Henry being like, we'll run away together. And she's like, almost like, wait, what? Almost like some Romeo and Juliet stuff. I thought it was kind of adorable. It's just the fact that she's like, we'll run away together. Like, no one has to find us. That way, it's like, we go our own way. It looks like we kind of did this on our own to a certain degree. And that way, Hilltop doesn't get blamed because they never saw Connie or... Daryl's faces so Hilltop wouldn't get blamed for it just become like oh they got away in the chaos of everything maybe or it'd be someone else that helped them but there'd be no proof that you know it was from Hilltop or whatnot so I thought that was kind of pretty neat and even Connie I like I like the fact is that we kind of um have Connie like stepping in like I think her and Daryl kind of make a nice team kind of having each other's back like that and her kind of setting things straight because Daryl's like okay you know what oh we do this and that and, you know Connie's coming up with the plan too it was kind of interesting because she was the one that was like, we're not leaving her behind. But Daryl was like, if we take her, our friends are going to die. And it's like, we have friends. She doesn't. And I love Connie doing the boss move of ripping the note and just walk away because it's like, yeah, no more discussion. It's it's done. But it's true because, like, the fact is she left her entire life behind. The only family she's known for years, the only family she has left in this world, she left them behind because she thought she could go back to them and help save other people but it's just like it was just too much knowing what she knows now realizing that there's more to this world than what her family taught her like you know it's also interesting i didn't catch this last episode maybe they had talked about it but referring to the uh, walkers as the guardians which makes sense and everything but it's like i didn't realize that last episode um, they must have said something and i just missed it i didn't i didn't put two and two together in that regard it's also interesting too because it's like it's almost like they take pride in it too it's like that guy just he's like i'm gonna be turning soon and it's like yes you'll be one of them but you, but beta was like you'll be one of them but you'll always be one of us and it's almost like there's a pride in it and telling the dude's wife like they like tell his wife that he's about to turn and we even saw him amongst the dead it's sad that he was like the first one daryl shot it was almost like oh it's like oh it's like oh there he is and it's oh never mind he's dead and i'm sure beta kind of got pissed about that too to a certain extent uh because i guess a lot of the guardians that they have at least some of the guardians not all of them but some of the guardians they have are former whisperers you know turn 
uh, walkers and stuff like that. But um, I, I, getting back to it, I, I wonder. I think for Connie, it's the fact is Connie isn't about sacrificing people either. That's why I think she was willing to kind of go in because she never explained why. Like she had talked about the fact is that she couldn't live with it, but we never really got an explanation as to why. But I guess it's like when you've lived in this world long enough, having to make sacrifices and leaving people behind and stuff like that, it's like it finally weighs down on you it's to a point you can't live with it anymore. And I guess like Lydia would have been that one extra thing. And it's like we're not going to send this girl out there in the world by herself, like leaving her alone. The fact of the matter is, you know. She, like I said, she has no one, and we can't do that. And I do like that it does bring Henry and, you know, Lydia closer. She has a hard time because she's like, I can't kill my own people because, you know, her, her family and everything. And Henry's like, no, I understand. The fact is, you know, I'll try and fight them without killing them. And she asks him, it's like, why did you come see me? He's like, because it was the right thing to do. She's like, it was stupid. But for him, it's like, you didn't want to go. She's like, no, tell me the real reason. I was like, because I care about you. And they kiss it. I'm like, ah, oh, you're so adorable. It's like, yeah, you fight for the people you care about the most. Like, they're, some, they're the people you fight the hardest for, you know? So I thought that was kind of neat. And even Daryl comes in and kind of interrupts it. But I also thought it was kind of adorable because they're on the lookout and they both kind of look at each other and just kind of like smiling and stuff. It's like, ah, oh, young love. It's so adorable. It just, it just, you know, I'm a sucker for I'm sucking for romance, dude. So it's like, oh, uh, young budding love in the apocalypse. It's it, it's adorable, dude. So I thought that was kind of pretty neat. Um, also, you got to give up to Connie with those damn moves, dude. That whisperer showed up behind her, had the knife, but the light reflected off of it, and Connie saw it and ducked when the knife got thrown. I was like, yo, look at those moves. That that is sick, you know. Once again, it's like, oh, dude, because I love what they're doing because it seems like they're built because it's like, oh, you know, Henry got injured. It's like, so what are we going to do? Take you to Alexandria, get patched up. It's like, no, we can't go there. And it's like, nah, we'll go somewhere else. Like you said, there's a whole world out there. And it's like all of us. It's like, yo, wait, is, is this the team? Like, is it just going to be, like, after they help with this, is, I wonder, is Connie going to go back to her sister and the group? Or is she going to keep rolling with Henry, Lydia, and Daryl? You know, Daryl might have found his place kind of looking after these two. It'd be kind of interesting because these two might kind of become, like, surrogate kids to him. That type of situation that he looks out for and that they become some family of their own. It'd be interesting if, uh... Cotty did decide to go along. I, I don't know if she is or not. Maybe she is. Maybe she's trying to find a purpose of her own, too. Maybe, you know. I don't know. It'd be interesting if they all kind of stuck together and just became like this tight-knit group. I don't know. Beyond going to Alexandria, there might be something else that comes about it. Because let's not forget, who's there? Michonne. Michonne was like, wait, you know what needs to happen to that girl and seeing that she's still alive and everything? That's probably going to bring up some stuff. Michonne is slowly opening herself up to everything because it's like, oh, we're opening up trade and everything. Hope this doesn't backfire. But now this girl is here that potentially could lead them back to Alexandria because, you know, Daryl had his little showdown with Beta, which was crazy. Um, basically saying that this isn't your world. Your world is dead. And Daryl knocks him into a elevator shaft, but the bastard's alive because he's too stubborn to die. So that's going to be more trouble that ends up following them. So that's going to be interesting. And I'm sure he's going to follow him back to Alexandria. Then Alpha's going to know about it because Lydia said, like, you embarrass my mom. Like, she's going to retaliate because she needs to show her dominance. So she's not going to stop until she comes after you. Because the whole point is, like, Beta was saying, like, either Lydia comes back or we get all of them to join the Guardians. Essentially kill everyone and force her hand, you know, to stop them from being killed. So that was really, really interesting to kind of see uh, things kind of go about in that point. It's kind of interesting because obviously everyone's at the kingdom now. Obviously, Carol and Izzy are like, oh, where's Henry? But now we know he's going to Alexandria. Oh, dude, it's going to be crazy to see what goes down in the next episode with all of this. There, like I said, it's, just, it's going to be interesting to see ultimately where there is going to be a situation of they, like, you know, they probably will, won't have a chance to kind of go out there in the world and stuff like that. But I kind of, I'd be so interested to see if they did kind of go off on their own or not, you know. Uh, I mean, because these circumstances might be what's necessary to kind of bring them all together. It's kind of interesting because it's like, obviously, the whispers kind of keep to themselves to a certain degree. But now, because of all of this, like, just once again, to prove for our dominance, Alpha's going to come after them at full strength. Obviously, also about Lydia. But once again, Lydia, it's, I think it's more so about having someone to dominate over. It's kind of like, 
you're my flesh and blood. Like I said, I always got the feeling like it's more like, oh, you're going to be the one to lead things while I'm when I'm gone. But it's also like you're something of mine. So you're my property in a sense because I gave birth to you. You're mine and I'm never letting you go in that regard. So it's not like a motherly love type of thing. I mean, at least that's how I feel about it. But we ultimately have to wait and see. But it's just like obviously she doesn't have the purest intentions because even the whole thing of like, oh, yeah, like. Tell me what you know. What was the point of me asking you if it turns out you don't know nothing, you know? So, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what goes down with that situation. And, like, also, like I said, this fair thing is going down. Everything's good. You know, Hilltop is there, but let's not forget Alexandria's on their way, too. So that's going to be interesting. It's like, oh, some of the bridges are, you know, between us are coming down. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we still haven't even begun to find out what exactly went down to lead to all that happening, you know? So, also, you know, even before, like, you know, oh, you know, kind of cementing that, you know, Daryl is kind of okay with Lydia now. The fact is that he was looking out for her. It's like, okay, you stay in here with the doll. I locked the door. Like, you're just getting away. This makes sure that you're okay. And Lydia's like, thank you. Because, you know, she can see that, you know, Daryl cares. Because he also sees how important she is to Henry. Like, the fact is that he's willing to do all this isn't just, you know, about doing the right thing. It's also about protecting someone that you care about. And I think for Daryl, that's something he can get behind. You know, it's just, you know, because he fights so hard for his... I mean, because also that was a concern for him. It's like the people we care about are friends will die, you know, if we get kind of too mixed up in all of this, too. So, it, it was just kind of an interesting thing. Like I said, I am very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about until the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love like to the force, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.